You're watching the news from Bahrain Television. Have a good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Order 47 for this year, inviting the Shura Council and the Council of Representatives to convene for the opening of the third session of the fourth legislative term on Sunday, October 16th. On behalf of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired Bahrain's delegation and the Second Asian Cooperation Dialogue Summit in Bangkok, Thailand, under the theme One Asia, Diverse Strength. Upon arrival, His Royal Highness was welcomed by the Prime Minister, General Prayat Chana Ocha, who, has welcomed, rather, who welcomed his participation in the summit. Mahali Sayyid Rayat Chan Ucha, Rais Wudara Mamlakat Thailand, Ashab al Jalalati was Sumu, Al Hadur al Kiram. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatah. Yotibuli and Ankal Lakum, Tahiyat Sahib al Jalala, Al Malik Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa, Malik Mamlakat al Bahrain, Makrunatan. بأطيب تمنياتي بنجاح القمة في تحقيق أهدافها بما يلبي طموحات دول وشعوب المنطقة وأتقدم بالشكر لمعالي رئيس وزراء مملكة تايلند الصديقة على كرم الضيافة وحسن الإعداد لهذه القمة مغدرا جهود صاحب السمو الشيخ صباح الأحمد الجابر الصباح أمير دولة الكويت الشقيقة في استضافة وإنجاح القمة الأولى ومهنئا دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة الشقيقة على رئاسة هذا التجمع مرحبا بانضمام جمهورية تركيا وجمهورية النيبال الصديقتين للمجموعة الحضور الكرام تنعقد هذه القمة في وقت تتصدر فيه التنمية المستدامة الأجندة العالمية إلا أن تحقيقها يتطلب توفير الأمن والاستقرار وعدم التأثير سلبا على هذه الجهود كما أن سن القوانين مثل جستا من شأنها أن تخل بالسيادة والحصانة للدول مما يتطلب أن نتعاون جميعا لضمان أمن واستقرار دولنا وإقامة اقتصاد قوي يوفر دعما لبرامجنا سعيا لتحقيق التنمية الشاملة الحضور الكرام إن القارة الأسيوية تمتلك موارد متنوعة تجعلها قادرة على القيام بدور دولي أكبر من خلال التكامل الاقتصادي وتقوية التعاون بين التجمعات الاقتصادية القائمة بما في ذلك مجلس التعاون لدول الخليج العربية وتطوير تنسيقنا المسبق في التعامل مع الأزمات الاقتصادية 
وتقوية آليات رصد ما يتحقق من تقدم في مختلف مجالات التعاون وختاما فإن مملكة البحرين ستظل تساهم بفعالية لتحقيق أهداف التعاون الأسيوي متمنيا لاجتماعنا هذا تحقيق تطلعات دولنا وشعوبنا في التعاون المثمر بجميع المجالات والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Also during the ceremony, the United Arab Emirates Minister of Environment and Climate Change, Dr. Thania Zayoudi, delivered a speech highlighting the critical phase the world is facing due to the increase of terrorist attacks. In addition to challenges facing climate change, which calls for everyone to make use of all natural and human resources. Other leaders, including Sultan Haji al Bulqa of Brunei and President Maitra Sarasina of Sri Lanka, confirmed the importance of enhancing joint cooperation among countries to achieve peace and security and the economic prosperity of Asian countries. On the sidelines of the ACD summit, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister met with the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah. The meeting confirmed the necessity to increase Gulf cooperation and coordination amid regional, rapid regional developments, asserting the need to hold a high level regional meeting to coordinate stances and increase the ability to deal with challenges. They highlighted their deep rooted brotherly relations and mutual keenness to further bolster joint cooperation. The Prime Minister commended the speech delivered by His Highness Emir of Kuwait, praising Kuwait's support to Asian countries for hosting the ACD General Secretariat and backing it with finances up to $2 billion US dollars to find developmental projects in Asian countries. The meeting reviewed several issues listed on the ACD summit agenda and their importance in, of enhancing a more effective cooperation. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also met with the Saudi Minister for Foreign Affairs, Adil Jubair. He affirmed Bahrain's full support to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, in line with the one destiny and deep-rooted historic bilateral relations. He hailed the strategic role Saudi Arabia plays in defending the nation's issues and confirmed that the Gulf Cooperation Council have no expansion greeds and do not interfere in any country's affairs, but only deter harm to its countries and people. The Prime Minister expressed appreciation and pride to the historic leading role of the Kingdom under the rule of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud, and reinforcing the good march of the GCC for the benefit of the people and serving the issues of the Arab and Islamic nations. He commended the role of Mr. Al-Jubair in various regional events, which reflects the effective Gulf diplomacy. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also held a meeting with the Thai Prime Minister and the Saudi Foreign Minister. The meeting discussed regional affairs and measures to reinforce Gulf-Thai cooperation through developing Saudi-Thai relations. The Prime Minister stressed the importance of Gulf-Asian cooperation in this critical time, highlighting Thailand's position among the ASEAN countries and Saudi's role regarding Gulf regional and international matters. During the meeting, the audience agreed on intensifying Thai-Saudi meetings and visits so as to develop bilateral relations and cooperation. The Prime Minister and the Saudi Foreign Minister thanked His Royal Highness for his initiatives to start a new phase for the Saudi-Thai relations, stressing that this step will enhance their cooperation and achieve their mutual interests. They also commended the efforts of His Royal Highness in reinforcing the mutual interests of the Asian cooperation in general and the Gulf Asian cooperation in particular. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also met with the Philippines Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi, during which the Prime Minister commended the development, witness, and joint cooperation. He asserted Bahrain's keenness to enhance its relations with Asian countries, including the Philippines, stressing that exchanging official visits with Asian countries will achieve the desired cooperation. For his part, Mr. Cusi thanked His Royal Highness for his role in strengthening bilateral relations, confirming his country's keen interest to further boost cooperation with Bahrain, especially in the field of energy.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa attended a lunch banquet held by his Thai counterpart in honor of government leaders and their delegations participating in the second ACD summit in Bangkok. His Royal Highness praised the organizing of the summit and the speeches delivered that call for enhancing joint action. He then discussed with attendees topics regarding Asian and international matters. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the cabinet meeting at Ghulaybiya Palace. On the occasion of the issuance of the Royal Order on the opening of the fourth session of the third legislative term by His Majesty the King, the Crown Prince directed all ministers to continue their cooperation with the executive authority in order to provide high living standards for the people of Bahrain and enhance the development march under the wise leadership of His Majesty the King. The cabinet highlighted the positive outcomes that resulted from the Prime Minister's visit to Thailand on behalf of His Majesty the King and his participation in the second ACD summit. The cabinet also hailed the summit's aim to enhance Asian joint action in all fields. The cabinet then made decisions that aimed to enhance competition, attract investors in tourism, and enhance government performance in order to achieve progress for the kingdom and its people through approving a draft decree on establishing a national communication center and the reorganization of the Ministry of Transportation. The Cabinet approved the memorandum regarding the ministerial draft resolution and many of the provisions of Resolution 196 of 2014, which is concerned with the fees of the General Director of Nationality, Passports and Residence Services. The Cabinet approved the memorandum regarding a draft decree to rename the National Authority for Qualifications and Quality Assurance of Education and Training to the Authority of Quality Assurance of Education and Training. They approved a memorandum regarding a draft resolution amending some of the provisions of Decree Law 3 of 94, which is concerned with dividing lands that are to be used for development and urbanization. The Cabinet approved the memorandum regarding reorganizing the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunication. They approved a draft decree to establish and organize a national communication center which is aimed to unify the government's media message in order to reflect the achievements, plans and programs of the government. They approved a memorandum amending some provisions of Law 11 of 75 regarding passports. The cabinet reviewed a memorandum regarding the national plan to manage runaway laborers and treat the problems employees shared houses. They also discussed a number of proposals by the Representatives Council on topics related to the Executive Authority. On the occasion of the success of His Majesty the King's Project for Future Schools and Tempkin's Digital Empowerment Project, which both came under the directives of His Majesty the King, the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, visited a school today to attend a virtual laboratory experiment. The minister announced that virtual laboratories will be implemented in all schools during 2016 and 2017. He affirmed that the ministry has successfully implemented science and math virtual labs in five middle schools last year, which helped in using science labs on a larger scale this year to include all middle schools. Math labs will be implemented in other schools in the near future. The minister stated that these labs help students to conduct virtual scientific experiments using computer technology, which saves schools the trouble of using typical tools and adds excitement to the applied aspect of science. He noted that virtual labs present interactive ways to teach math, especially when it comes to teaching 2D and 3D shapes, which will develop students' thinking skills and mental abilities. He said that all schools that recently participated in the virtual labs project have been supplied with the necessary tools and technologies, including laptops, to every science teacher. 
He added that the ministry has already started executing training programs for teachers to enhance their skills.